The Retirement Cafe podcast. What's life really like in a retirement living community? Hello and welcome to another episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast with me, your host, Justin King. If you're thinking about your retirement or already retired, you're in the right place. My aim is to help you plan for and live a successful and meaningful retirement. Retirement is far more than just a financial event. It's a significant life event, a major transition, which will bring with it new challenges and opportunities. So each episode contains tips, information and inspiration to help you feel more informed and confident about your retirement. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. It's great to have you here. If you've followed the podcast for some time, you'll know that I've spoken with a couple of people from retirement villages about what they offer residents and why people should consider moving in. This week, we will hear what it's like from the inside. I'm really pleased to share with you a conversation I had with clients of mine, Nick and Jane Crowhurst. Just last year, Nick and Jane moved from their home in Highcliffe, Dorset, to live in a retirement village in Hampshire. Nick is now 73 and Jane 62. They're both fit and active and wanted to make the move quite early in their retirement because they wanted to live somewhere that they could age gracefully that also allowed them to have a rich and active lifestyle within a ready-made community. After researching many options, they found Bishop Stoke Park in Eastleigh. In our conversation, we talk about the many advantages living in a retirement village has had for them, including new friendships and more activities available than they have had the time to do, as well as the buying process and ongoing costs. They share the good and the bad, warts and all, of life in a retirement community. So without further ado, here's Nick and Jane's story. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast. I'm really, really pleased to be joined by some old friends and some clients of mine, Nick and Jane. Now, welcome Nick and Jane to the Retirement Cafe podcast. Thank, thank you very much. Um, now, we're in your home. I thank you ever so much. We've got brownies, we've got coffee. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to having a chat with you today. But of course, there is something that is quite unique to your, well, unique to your circumstances, your lives recently. You've recently moved and we're now in your new home. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so um, of course, lots of people do that. And um, tell me about the, the kind of story of how you got to here and why this is maybe a little bit different to, um, to, to, um, to, to, to a lot of people in their retirement. Um, well, what we did was we started thinking about moving and started looking around during COVID. Um, and we wanted to future-proof ourselves, really. Right. So what a future-proof, what, what does that mean to you? It means coming somewhere fairly secure. Yeah. Um, it means in a future-proofed flat, so all the doors are wide enough, the corridors are wide enough, all the showers are flat entry, um, that so sort of thing. you're thinking about your long-term kind of health. Yes, and, really. And yeah. yes. get older, you want something yeah. That's right. easy exactly. to manage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is quite a unique place, isn't it? This is obviously, you know, there's plenty of properties like that. Tell me a bit more about why we're particularly here. Because this is actually a retirement village. Ah, yes. Um, and it's a community. It's a ready set made community. It's got facilities. Um, we've got a pool. We've got a gym. We've got lovely grounds. There's a restaurant. There's a cafe. Yep. There's a little shop on the site. There's also transport that they will take you around in. They arrange trips out. Wow. Especially if you um, can't drive or you lose your ability to drive, right. which is always. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a really made community. There's social activities. The residents arrange various social activities, which you can join in as much or as little as you want. Yeah. Um, it's also very secure if we want to go on holiday. It's great for lock up and leave mm. as well. And you can be as sociable or as unsociable <laughs> as you want here. Now, it's just a good lifestyle. Absolutely, and I'm so forward, looking forward to, to having a look around a little later. But the... Um, you know, a lot of people's kind of view of retirement villages. I mean, you're pretty young for entering into a retirement village. First of all, would you agree? And second of all, um, have you uh, are you young comparable to the other 
people in, in this retirement We still village. are young. But there again, the other things, a lot of people, when we first came here, said, thank God you didn't leave it too late, yeah. which a lot of people do. Yeah. You've got yeah. the facilities like yeah. the gym and the pool. Yeah. You've got to be yeah. able to use them. You've, get... you've got a bit of a mix of ages because phase one was put up about Seven eight, years, eight, eight, years, eight yeah. nine yeah. years ago. And then phase two was a few years after that. And phase three is only just done now. So you've got younger people moving into phase three. The right. people that were here initially are perhaps well into their 80s now, some yeah. of them. Right. That's one so, of the things that attracted us is the fact it was becoming a new a new phase. So yeah. the whole 50 new people are joining. Right. And so the, who, who's the organisation who runs this This, this is site? Anchor Hanover. Right. Which is actually a charity. Okay. Um, the other thing we liked about this particular village is we not all have got. There is actually a care home on site. Right. So we're in we're in Eastley. Yes, we are. Eastley. Well, Bishop Stoke. Bishop yeah. Stoke. So that's um, near Winchester, Southampton. Yes. Kind of area for yeah. people who are unfamiliar of this uh, right. park. Yeah. Now, you had some experience of, a, of of these retirement villages before, didn't you? Actually, coming to we yes to, to live yes, here. Yes, because my mum's was has been in one for a few years. It's owned by a different company, but right. it's a very similar setup. Yeah. Right. Um, she moved there after my father died, and she was alone in the big family house yeah. with a huge garden. Yeah. Worrying about maintenance and <laughs> whatever. Things. Yeah. Um, so she moved in and. Found it was brilliant, loved the lifestyle, um, got involved in social coffee mornings and whatever, had company, was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they and were extremely good to her during COVID. They really did try and look after the staff. Mm. Uh, right. The staff really did try yeah. and look after them. Right. Um, when people were having trouble getting groceries, they made sure that they got them in for the mm. restaurant and then would sell off right. carrots and bits and pieces to the residents as needed. They came around, phone every night to make sure that everyone's okay. Jane's mother's quite a bit older than. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so how old was she when she went? She she in her eighties, wasn't she? About eighty, Probably, wasn't she? Yeah, about yeah. late, very late seventies, early eighties. Right. Okay. About. It was a weight off our mind as well that she of was because we're in we're in Dorset and she's in Kent. Yeah, and, yeah. And it was difficult to travel, but she knew she was. Yeah. And how long has she been in the retirement village now? Probably about nine years. Wow, okay, so yeah. that's quite a long time. So she's yeah. got a lot of friends and... and oh, yes, yeah. she has, yeah. yeah. Really part of the community. And and has her health um, continued to be well, or what? What's, how's that progressed with... Uh, she's fine, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's had, um, she had arthritis, but she's always had that. So she's had a hip and a knee done right. since moving there, yeah. as I tend to... But yes, basically, she's in... Mm. Decent health, yeah. yeah, 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 and I think it's kept her going because she has activities. Mm. Um, she goes across to a cl- craft club and yeah. knits and does bits and pieces. <coughs> Brilliant. Um, and she wouldn't have had the operation anywhere near successfully. She'd still be in the old house. Yeah, yeah, being yeah, in sure. a being a, in a one lo- one level flat mm. with a walk in shower and things like that has made life a lot easier for yes. her. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of people um, probably may not be familiar with kind of buying a home on a retirement village. So how is it how is it different than just buying, you know, number three Acacia Avenue? What, 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 what's the kind of process with it and, why, and how does it kind of financially work out differently? Right. Um, it's leasehold for right. a start. OK. I think we've got a lease of 125, 125 years. 125 years. Should yeah. outlast you. Should outlast you. That's the out, idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's one thing about it. Yeah. Um, apart from that, the buying process is very similar with your estate agent. They sell it here. Right, um, yeah. They act as estate agents. You have to go through solicitors. They go through all the contracts. That's yeah. all very much the same. Yeah. Um, because we moved into a brand new apartment, there was an incentive. Um, we had money for carpets and curtains right. and things like that, up to a certain amount. Um and they did a lot of things for us to help us move in. I mean, yeah. to say we've had those doors, they reversed the doors for us before we moved yeah. in. Right. So yeah. they get more lounge space right. and things yeah. like that. You can customise slightly to different bits yeah. and pieces. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you mentioned leasehold. Mm-hmm. Therefore, obviously, the, the length of the lease, that presumably comes with a, a, a an ongoing rent, an ongoing yeah. kind yes, of maintenance does. or... Yeah. How yeah. does that work? You actually pay a monthly fee. Right. Um, and that's to cover all the facilities. So that covers all the external maintenance of the building. Right. It covers external window cleaning. It also covers the 
maintenance of the pool, the grounds, the gym, the stu- meeting studio, uh, reception, and all, all of that area. Right, and the transport. Right. And, and the, the transport. The transport for yeah. Um, can I be rude enough to actually ask what, what the cost of that is? £512 a, a month. month. Right, okay. So you've got transport into the village, into the shops, doctors, yeah. Yeah. hospitals. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, some not all villages do it, no, but, all but really. here, if as long as the driver's free, they have set days they go to um, into Chandler's Ford, they go to Waitrose, they also take a group of men over to play snooker once a week. <laughs> right. Um, they also go to various trips, so they'll take you down to Sainsbury's or they'll go up to the garden centre. So there's various trips arranged throughout the month. Some of them are certain shopping trips on certain days. Right. Um, but if they're free in the meantime, if you need to drop, be dropping at Eastleigh for the dentist or the doctors at the local doctors, they will try and drop you down. Great. And pick you up. And Great. pick you up. And how would you... Um, how many... Uh, I think residents are the wrong word, probably. But I mean, how many people are in the community? About 150, two, more. 200, Maybe probably two, near right. enough. Okay. It's there's a reasonable more, size. Yeah. There's another 50 or so joining when the Twinehams. The, yeah, there's the a few place. more to come right. in. So still. Place has been built. Yeah, right. still, well, it's been built now. They're just moving in now. Yeah, this is the first building in the third stage. And then, of course, um, to give me an idea or to give our listeners an idea, what would. Um, what would an apartment, you know, kind of cost, just roughly? Or is it we pay just over 600000 600, for this one. They are, right. do tend to be more expensive. Yes, they are, is yeah. a premium. Yes. Yeah. You've they, also got to be aware of when you sell it, there is a clawback. That There's varies a, between well, it's places, a, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, between different villages and different owners. Okay. There's a sinking fund at okay. the end right. um, to cover anything major. They take so much value off. It's 4% here. So okay. on the value that this... When, so when this is sold, 4% goes back to the company okay. for the sinking fund for okay. repairs. Others have a higher one. Right. You get paid yeah. more with others. So you've got to be aware of what yeah. you're getting yeah. into. That's right, yes, yeah. yes. And you've got the monthly charge regardless. Mm. And... Um, that monthly charge, of course, could increase with inflation. Yes, yeah. so it's written into the lease how they're allowed to increase it and right, by what yeah, amounts. Right. And you do see the accounts for the company mm, yeah, and all yeah. the breakdown of the expenses. Right, mm. right. So you just got to, again, get advice, be aware of, of what all the costs are going yeah. to be. Yeah, well, yeah. And go, okay, now I know what I'm going to Yeah, I'm that's right. Paying for. Yeah. That's right. Plus on here, on phase th- some of the phases, phase one and phase two, electricity and gas are billed by the company, Anchor. Right. It's all on metres and they bill you. Here, we've got our own supplier. We're responsible for E.ON, so we pay for gas and electric okay. direct to the supplier. Same so, in the house. Yes. Some things are different. Yeah, we pay for water. We charge for water. And obviously, you still have to pay council tax. Right. How long have you been in here now? <sighs> Moved ten in months. right at the end of February. Right in the yeah. end of February. About nine, so, ten months. Yeah. yeah, nine, ten months. What's it been like? It's been very good. Thoroughly enjoyed it, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah, we were slightly apprehensive because I yeah. think you always are moving into a yeah. new situation. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. loved it. We've got straight in. The restaurants, um, different villages have different... They're all very... All different things. Here, the restaurant is open every lunchtime. Right. And then it's open two evenings a week. Right. And that's their social evenings. So the bar opens an hour before the restaurant and they try to do different themes or menus or different things. Yeah. So that was some of the first things we went across to mm. and Sunday lunch to start yeah. meeting people. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and what's that been like, meeting people? Oh. It's been very good. Yeah. Only things we have been names. <laughs> <laughs> very difficult. So many people and so many faces. Badges, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> be really useful. Yeah. Um, no, it's been great, and they're yeah. very good here because if you want a table in the restaurant for just the two of you, then yeah. that's what you ask for. Right. If you um, are going with a group of people from here, then you ask for a table for those people. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time, if you want to be social, well, you just ask you on a social table. Right. And they stick you with a house. Um, they'll put you yeah. with either another couple or a group of six, or they'll put all the tables together and you'll right. end up on one long table. Right. So it's brilliant. Yeah. Depends at the time, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 I wish you might had just helped to meet me people again. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a, they have a Monday, they have a, a weekend breakfast once a month don't they yes they do a communal get to, breakfast yeah communal breakfast which all new people are invited to in their first months basically yeah. but you can turn up as well 
if you uh, want. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. We also, there's a residence association, yeah. um, which we have to pay the princely sum of £5 to join. Right. <laughs> um, and then we get one vote per apartment. Right. Yeah. yeah. On oh, matters, got, yeah, yeah. So that has that has some power. I mean, so mm, mm. originally, Anchor were going to build a first block right over there where the car park is, but the residents weren't too happy about that, were they? Because it's encroaching. So in the end, they didn't. They made up the numbers by putting an extra floor on some of the others. Right. So they do have some. Mm. Great. Um, and mm, we're nice. getting the. Uh, the cinema, are we going back to the cinema screen as well? I think it? so, yes. They've now put in to put a um, big screen into the part of the restaurant to put right. it down, and they talked about then they can do it easier for their meetings, and they're also going to put films on. A film club. Brilliant. A film club, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Certainly over the winter when it was dark and wet, we were used, we have used the swimming pool a lot. Mm. That's been fantastic. The gym less so, but that's embarrassing. But we <laughs> <laughs> the gym we keep meaning to, and then the weather improved. <laughs> and there's exercise classes as well, which I go to. And, Great, yeah. With yeah. my balance isn't as good as it used to be, no, unfortunately. No. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of exercises that are all included. Um, yeah. So there's sort of balance. You can do seated exercises, standing exercises. Um, there's a disco dancing group. Mm. There's aqua aerobics. Mm. Um, all sorts of things. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. You mentioned that you kind of, you know, you came here because you were wanting to future proof. And, um, mm. and obviously, as you. To an you, extent, you, yeah. Your yeah. mum, mm. you know, your mum has had the kind of inevitable um, <laughs> uh, hip operations and, yeah. and, and such like that, that seems to be the norm nowadays as we mm. get older. Um, what, what happens here? As you get older and possibly more infirm, is there are the facilities available for people? What, how does yeah, it all? Yeah, we're, we're on. This is independent living. Yeah, but there is also a package they put, they can put together called assisted living. Right. Um, which I haven't really don't know huge amount about, but yeah. there is an assisted living where I think you get your meals. Yeah. Um, included. And you can factor in as much care as you need or whatever. Because the other thing is, Anchor does employ, Anchor Hanover does employ carers. It also employs cleaners, mm. all of which you can... And a vetted. Yeah. A vetted that you can hire and pay for. Obviously, right. that's extra. Right. Yeah. So some of the people, I think, have got dementia, so they can hire somebody to come across for a few hours to sit with them. Right. While the other person can mm. go off and do whatever they need to do. Brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah, they'll also help with getting you out of bed, washing, dressing, and that sort yeah. of thing as yeah, you need it. it. Yeah. Hopefully, that's a long time in the future. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's it's there. It's there. Also, also on this particular village, there is a care home. Right. So you could have one in a care home, and perhaps one still independent living or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Great. Any negatives? Well, there are some. I'm sure there was the uh... the apartment is not as big as a force. Full bedroom house. <laughs> it's the same floor area, actually. It's the same right. floor area, right. but it's just so that's fewer taking rooms. a bit of adjusting to um, yeah. Yeah. yeah to get um, used to downsizing in some way. You, you yeah. are close to fairly close to neighbours. I mean, when you come in the main door, you've got another f- few flats around you, um, yes. which could be a negative. Yeah, no garden. It's a big but, one for some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think perhaps no garden. Right. We've got the patio. We've got the little. Balcony. Um, for Even me, the that's says, not. Like, you don't get that much, right? You but can you put... can get an allotment, a small allotment. Yeah, they bed. have got some yeah. beds, some raised okay. little beds that you can. Use. We weren't that gardening anyway, so no. it didn't bother us at all. No, no, no. Okay, so I can see that for some people who love their garden mm. and love that type of thing, it's a, mm. maybe mm. a negative. Mm. For me, mm. I've got the grounds to walk around and sit in without having to yeah. do the garden. Yeah, the grounds yeah. are quite extensive. I oh think. yes, oh, yeah. 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 And here, if you walk across the other side of the road, you've got Bishop Stoke Park, which is an yeah, enormous wooded area. Beautiful. With uh, all-weather walking tracks and things like that all yeah, the way through Yeah, it. there's a Stoke Park Woods, which has mm. got a three-kilometre gravelled path all round through. So it seems to me, I mean, you know, we, we talk about the, the, the successful later life of around, you know... Um, uh, friendship and, and, and social interaction is mm, significantly mm, important. Mm. Um, you know, keeping fit and healthy is obviously mm. staves off dementia and all other mm. types of things and make sure mm. we have a better life for longer. Mm. Um, and, you know, financially, if you can afford it. Yes, you know, I think yeah, that's I mean, That yeah. is the big thing. It is expensive. <coughs> it's yeah. a choice. It's a lifestyle choice. Yeah. But yeah, I know. I mean, we've been so, we used to play bowls. 
when we were in Christchurch, we, did, yes. we used to play bowls um, indoor and outdoor with the U3A. We also used to do board games and card games mm. and that sort of thing. But beyond that, that was really our two or three things a week. Here, there's something on... We still play bowls. We go down to Fair Oak and play in the, for the, in the hall down there. Right. Um, that's external. We still do that. We've still got the car. Yeah. Um, there's a board... They, the residents do board games and card games every month, mm. which you can go across to. Um, but they also do social evenings, so they do a murder mystery evening, they do quizzes, mm. all sorts of other things as well, basically. Yeah. Mm. There's coffee, uh, tea and coffee afternoon once a month. Mm. So just a lot more, and a lot more variety, really. Yeah. And obviously a lot more of different people that we see. Yeah. I mean, to say, we found it very quiet on our estate, didn't we? Because the the way it was set up, you could never... See, very often you didn't see neighbours for months, if not years, sure, literally. Sure, yeah. So now you have this yeah. on-tap community that you can, t- that's you right. can yeah, engage yeah. with or not engage that's with. Right. That's right, it's pure choice. Well, yeah, how much you to. do. Yeah. yeah, And obviously we've got our own front door, so yeah. you can stay in. You don't need, you know, you don't need to see anyone, but no. you can. No garage might annoy some people. Ah, You don't have true. a garage. Right. Yeah, Mm. and obviously to come with the lease, there are various rules and regulations within the lease as to what you can and can't do. Mm. Um, Like one of them, which I think might upset you, you can't wash your car. They don't want car washing people coming around in the where everyone's cars parked, car you know, and doing that. So you're supposed to take your car off site and get it washed. So just silly little things. I mean, doesn't bother us. No, but again. Being very aware what you're signing up to. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. agree yeah. it before you... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the other thing is, of course, if you want to incha- change the inside of the apartment in major ways, you need to get permission. Yeah, right. or electrical work. Um, but right. you can change kitchens and that, if, as long as you're keeping it basically the same layout, because you're just replacing like yeah. with like. Mm. But if you want to do major, like not walls down or anything, you do need written permission. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I have to check that mm. it can be done, because... Mm. Yes, because the properties have been designed purposely for this, this type of living. That's right. They? Yeah, and, uh, and this yeah. type of construction. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also, of course, there's a maintenance team on site if you need them. Again, yeah. you pay for their time if you if it's something yeah. you want done. But yeah, but that's always useful. So if something goes wrong, you could just ring over to reception and they send someone round. Mm. Great. Great. It's got its a lot of advantages. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And it, it was quite useful for me because I had my cataracts on, as you know. Yes. And um, that was just slightly worrying, just in case I could not might not have been able to drive afterwards because I had several other eye problems. But sure. that's been successful. But that was quite useful then because we had the transport available. Yeah. And the other thing we haven't mentioned, of course, is the town Eastleigh you can walk to from here. Right. Which is one of the things we yeah, picked. Yeah, when we looked at different retirement villages, some of them... Um, charge more per month um some of them have got but then you've got they've got restaurants open all the time so i think you're perhaps subsidizing more of the restaurant whereas yeah. ours is open, only open two nights a week um some of them are not willing to drop you run around dropping at dentists and doctors some just do set trips on set days yeah. um we looked at a couple of other villages one was over towards romsey mm. um and it was a different provider and it was a very similar setup with a big house, lots of grounds and whatever. But it was on a country road with no lights in a lane with no pavements. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't. Um, so it was a lo- although it was a lovely spot and lovely apartments you were for us. In it. Yeah. For us, it wouldn't have worked because no. we still want to get out and walking. Yes. And also, if you were driving back, when you get older, perhaps no lights on a country lane is not the best. No. No, no. Um, so you do need again it's location yeah and Eastley, same as a house easily although it's not a <coughs> probably as rich a town as Christchurch it has got all the facilities it's got a shopping centre up banks shops all, all and of course the train line and you've got the train line London and wherever yeah. and, and you've got the motorway Yes. The M3 meets the M27, just about a mile or two away from yeah. here. So. Yeah. yeah to get out onto the M3 we can go north up through Banbridge and out that way yes. yeah. and the airport of course, and we've got Southampton Airport. Yeah, you have got, yeah, really well connected, aren't you? Yeah, it's one of the reasons mm. we picked this place mm. as well, mm. the connections. Mm. Plus, I say, we can walk into town in about 20, 25 minutes, which for us now is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so this suits us now. Yes. 
and hopefully it will suit us for a long time in the future, which is yeah. the idea. Yeah, no, ideal. ideal. Our neighbours is in her 80s. She walks into town sometimes, but she just catches the bus back because right. it is slightly hilly. Here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get taxis back. But yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. brilliant. Well, I think that's been um, that's been thoroughly thoroughly interesting um, from mm. my own perspective, and I'm sure for many of our uh, the mm. viewers and listeners. So. Um, Thank you so much for taking the time right, to chat no to problem. me this morning. No and uh, and if uh, anyone would like any further questions or details, I'm happy to answer. Brilliant. You forward yeah, brilliant. Them on. brilliant. Yeah. Well, we will do. We yeah. will do. And um, yeah, once again, thank you so much. It's a personal choice. I think the other thing is if we haven't got any children, which does make a difference in some ways. Of course. Yeah, I think perhaps if you were worried about leaving all of your money every single penny to your children, then perhaps you wouldn't want a sinking fund on the end for us. Mm. It's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or possibly you're just giving up a little bit of the growth in the money, aren't you? That's true. That's true, yeah. yeah. So, again, it depends. Um, and, of course, if you're over your inheritance tax limit, you're actually, um, you know... It's no good anyway. You, 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 you're, you're, you're saving some tax, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. <laughs> you're going to lose it one way or the okay. other. It all depends it. on everyone's philosophy, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah. uh, But anyway, once again, thank you so much. It's really fascinating and... Um, uh, yeah, thanks for the time. Thank okay. you. I look forward to um, seeing seeing the rest of the site. Yeah, yeah we'll right. take you around. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. A big thank you to Nick and Jane for inviting me into their home and for sharing their story with us today. To find out more about their retirement village, you can find the link to Bishop Stokes Park on our website at retirementcafe.co.uk. As ever, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it really helps more people like you find us. And for more interviews and retirement planning videos, you may want to check out my YouTube channel. Just search for Justin King MFP or click the link in the show notes. If you have an idea for a guest or a topic you'd like to hear about on the Retirement Cafe podcast, please get in touch on hello at the retirementcafe.co.uk or you can find me on Twitter at Justin King CFP. I hope to hear from you soon. So until next time, I'm Justin King, helping you feel more informed in your retirement.